The Philippines celebrated on Friday, the eighth anniversary of the Permanent Court of Arbitration's 2016 ruling that the nation has exclusive sovereign rights over the West Philippine Sea, and that China's Nine Dash Line is invalid. With pouring support globally, international community led by the United States and European Union called out China to abide the 2016 arbitral ruling. On July 12, marks the eighth anniversary of the award issued by the tribunal, constituted under Annex 7 to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, in the arbitration instituted by the Republic of the Philippines against the People's Republic of China, concerning the South China Sea. This award represents a significant milestone in the peaceful resolution of disputes in the South China Sea. Dispute settlement mechanisms provided under UN Convention on the Law of the Sea contribute to the maintenance and furthering of the international legal order, based on the rule of law. While the Philippines' 2016 arbitral award victory gains more international support every year, China continues to defy and will never accept the ruling. It is far too dug in on its discredited maritime claims over nearly all of the South China Sea. Beijing refused to join the arbitral proceedings back in 2013 is itself an undeniable fact that it got no solid case to secure a legal victory. So, it went on to attack the tribunal, the award, and the unclose itself, while China is pretending to champion for international law. The international community, led by the United States, reaffirms their unwavering support for the Philippines' right in the West Philippine Sea, in upholding international law particularly unclose. In a statement released by U.S. Secretary of State, the United States joins the Philippines in marking the eighth anniversary of the final and legally binding arbitral ruling. U.S. State Secretary Antony Blinken affirms the arbitral tribunal's determination that China's expansive maritime claims in the South China Sea are inconsistent with international law. We continue to call on the People's Republic of China to abide by the 2016 arbitral ruling, to cease its dangerous and destabilizing conduct, and to comport its conduct as well as its territorial and maritime claims in the South China Sea to the international law of the sea. U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines Mary Kay Carlson also posted on X to support their unwavering support to the Philippines in marking the victory of the 2016 arbitral ruling. In a statement published by Australian Ambassador to the Philippines, the 2016 South China Sea Arbitral Award, which is final and binding, all parties involved must respect and honor the award. Australia has consistently called for the decision to be respected. Adherence to UNCLOS is vital for an open, stable and prosperous region. A stable and peaceful maritime domain is at the heart of our shared interests and prosperity. Australia has consistently called for compliance with the 2016 South China Sea Arbitral Award. We reiterate our steadfast commitment to international law, particularly UNCLOS. So we will continue to pursue, collectively, maritime security in the West Philippines. And as the Australian ambassador to the Philippines, I can tell you this, you can count on Australia. Madam Salama. The ambassador of Japan in the Philippines also issued support to the Philippines towards the promotion, maintenance, and strengthening of a free and open international order based on the rule of law. According to France ambassador in the Philippines, as an Indo-Pacific nation, France is fully committed to uphold freedom of navigation and overflight consistent with international law, particularly the UNCLOS, together with Philippines and other like-minded partners. The European Union also sends strong message to China as a support to the Philippines award rendered in the arbitration. The EU views the 2016 arbitral award as legally binding upon the parties to the proceedings, including the important finding that the second Thomas Shoal is within the exclusive economic zone and continental shelf of the Philippines. All parties involved must respect and honor the award. Upholding the freedoms, rights and duties established in UNCLOS, in particular the freedoms of navigation and overflight, is of paramount importance for reducing tensions in the region. It is also essential for maintaining, strengthening and deepening peace and security, while ensuring safe, free and open sea supply routes worldwide. Over the years, the Philippines has continued to demonstrate this commitment to peace even in the face of the unlawful actions which have caused serious incidents in the South China Sea. Without ever diminishing their resolve, to protect and promote their people's interest, and the full and responsible enjoyment of its legally settled maritime entitlements and its accompanying rights and jurisdictions, the DFA said in a statement. 
The award is a reaffirmation of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, and protects their rights as a coastal state and a seafaring people. Every effort to secure their legitimate interests in its maritime domain is a testament to the determination and courage of the Filipino people, while showcasing the Philippines' vision of peace and stability that inspires and resonates beyond the waters of the South China Sea. China's aggression is born out of its sweeping claim over most of the South China Sea. In 2016, however, the arbitral tribunal ruled in favor of the Philippines and invalidated China's 9 dash, now 10 dash line claims. China expresses strong dissatisfaction, with firm opposition to the United States and European Union's statement on the 8th anniversary of the South China Sea arbitration and has lodged solemn representations. According to China, the US and EU are not party to the South China Sea issue and their statement, disregarding the history and facts of the South China Sea issue, openly endorses the Philippines' infringement on China's sovereignty. This is not conducive to regional peace and stability, and is extremely irresponsible, the spokesperson of the Chinese mission to the US and EU said in a statement on Friday. The arbitral tribunal violated the principle of state consent, exercised its jurisdiction ultra vires, and rendered an award in disregard of the law. The award is illegal, null and void. China does not accept or recognize it, and will never accept any claim or action based on the award. The changing dash lines are the basis of China's claim to sovereignty over 90% of the South China Sea. This claim is based on the U-shaped 11 dash line etched on a map in the 1940s by a Chinese geographer, then 9 dashed lines in 1952, and currently, the 10 dash line in mid-2023. The line extends into the exclusive economic zones of a number of countries. The 2016 arbitral ruling, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, invalidates China's Nine Dash Line and its historical claims and declared its activities in the area as unlawful. But Beijing rejected the arbitration ruling, citing that UNCLOS has no jurisdiction. As the Philippines makes official submission to the United Nations on entitlements to an extended continental shelf in the West Philippine Sea, up to 350 nautical miles of its baseline in Palawan, in addition to the 200 nautical miles exclusive economic zone. Now, China has protested against the Philippines' move, citing that Philippines' action is unacceptable, and in violation to the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, and the Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf, which the later was questioned by China in 2016 ruling. China with its typical audacity, now using United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea to support its claim, which claim was already declared invalid, on the same convention. China not only defy UNCLOS' decision, but also question its authority regarding the South China Sea disputes, which is a direct insult to the convention which China is also a signatory. And now China is citing the convention to support its invalid and imaginary claims. The Philippines already challenged the then nine dash line drawn by China before the permanent court of arbitration. The tribunal's ruling is certainly a legal victory for the Philippines over China as the judges agreed unanimously on almost all the questions submitted by the Philippines, including a declaration from the tribunal that China is obliged to comply with UNCLOS and that the award is legally binding on China. For long, China has argued that its claim over the South China Sea is historical in nature. Several Chinese analysts and academics contend that the islands of the South China Sea were first discovered by China's Han Dynasty more than two millennia ago. Accordingly, Chinese missions in the 3rd century AD to Cambodia made accounts of the Paracels and Spratlys. Then between the 10th and the 14th century, during the period of Song and Yuan dynasties, Chinese accounts show the South China Sea to be within China's national boundaries. Beijing relies on documentary and archaeological evidence, indications of Chinese activity in the SCS spanning thousands of years, to support China's sovereignty claims. At first glance, this proffered evidence may appear to be sufficient proof of China's claims of sovereignty, especially when China's sovereignty is assumed and evidence is sought to support these claims. However, this historical rights argument has been challenged on several fronts. First, there is scant proof that China has controlled the South China Sea after the mid-17th century. Indeed, after a burst of seafaring exploration during the Ming Dynasty between 1368 to 1644, 
China's emperors largely shut their empire off from the seas. As a consequence, there is scarce cartographic proof of China's rights over the South China Sea. Most of the land features and islands within the South China Sea are just microscopic bits of earth with little history behind them and basically no civilians living on them. In addition, the archaeologists who discovered archaeological evidence in the SCS are Chinese and in some cases are sponsored by Beijing, potentially biasing them to conclude that the evidence proves China's ownership of the islands and disregard other potential sources of the evidence such as shipwrecks, temporary stops by Chinese ships, or even planting of the evidence by interested individuals or groups. In referencing China's historic claims, Beijing refers to the Chinese people and not to any particular government or country. These statements show that Beijing views China as a cultural group of people, rather than as a particular nation-state or government. With this viewpoint, China looks at the evidence of the activity of Chinese people in the SCS and the evidence of Chinese claims of sovereignty over the SCS as inextricably intertwined. The fact that the vast area of the South China Sea has been a common fishing ground for centuries not only for the Chinese but also for people living in modern states of the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei and Indonesia. Historical records may not favor China in the continuing debate on the control of the South China Sea, through which as much as $5.3 trillion in global trade passes annually. To further disprove China's claim of historical rights, several ancient Chinese maps, dating as far back as 900 years ago, to the Song and Tang dynasties. All the maps showed that China's southernmost territory was the island of Hainan. Additionally, the 1947 Constitution of the Republic of China, also identified Hainan as the country's southernmost part, raising questions over what would later emerge as the Nine Dash Line claim. Meanwhile, the Philippines backed its historical claims from the 18th century map, where the Scarborough Shoal first appeared on maps of Philippine waters in the 1750s. On the night of September 12, 1748, the British East India Company ship Scarborough struck the now famous reef of the same name while on its way from England to China. As a result, the name Scarborough Shoal first appeared on maps of Philippine waters by English cartographers in the 1750s, according to research by a member of the Philippine Map Collectors Society. It also appears in the Mario Velarde map in his 1749 book under the name Panicot or Scarborough Shoal, both terms refer to Bajo de Massinlac. Going back to the 18th century, the hydrographical and choreographical chart of the Philippine Islands was one of the first versions of the Philippines map. This magnificent map of the Philippine archipelago, drawn by the Jesuit father Pedro Mario Velarde and published in Manila in 1734, is the first and most important scientific map of the Philippines. The Philippines was at that time a vital part of the Spanish Empire, and the map shows the maritime routes with captions from Manila to Spain, and to Mexico known as New Spain, and other Spanish territories in the New World. Currently, the Philippines based its claims on a legal victory on 12 July 2016, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. The arbitral tribunal in the South China Sea arbitration between the Republic of the Philippines versus the People's Republic of China which issued a unanimous award in the disputed waters in the South China Sea largely favorable to the Philippines, which was rejected by China. In modern history, China backed its sovereignty claim and related rights over this territory in accordance with the 1943 Cairo Declaration and the 1945 Potsdam Proclamation. After World War II Japan returned to China the Chinese territories it had occupied, including Taiwan and the Penghu Islands, the Chisha Islands, and the Nansha Islands. However, the 2016 Arbitral Tribunal under the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea invalidated China's historical claims over the disputed waters of the South China Sea. The tribunal dealt with the question of whether China's claims to historic rights within the Nine Dash Line, now Ten Dash Line were in conformity with UNCLOS. It was first observed that this area, in which China claimed rights, formed in the long historical course, to living and non-living resources like fisheries and petroleum resources, partially overlaps with areas that would otherwise comprise the exclusive economic zone or the continental shelf of the Philippines. In the view of the tribunal, UNCLOS establishes a comprehensive maritime zones regime and allocates rights in these areas to the coastal state and other states. In the areas of the EEZ and the continental shelf, the coastal state enjoys exclusive sovereign rights to the exploitation of living and non-living natural resources. Concerning the rights of other states in these areas, the tribunal found that UNCLOS does not permit the preservation of the historic rights of any state within the EEZ or the continental shelf of another state. 
Therefore, after the entry into force of UNCLOS, the historic rights that might have existed for China within the Nine Dash Line in areas that would otherwise include the EEZ or the CS of the Philippines were superseded by the Maritime Zones regime created by UNCLOS. That means the pre-existing historic rights no longer exist as they are not compatible with UNCLOS.